take what I like to call a learning holiday. Now, getting a PhD is about sustained effort. And unfortunately, we are not robots. And so sustained effort can just mean that you lose interest and motivation in the thing that you're meant to be doing. Now, just take a moment to think about another skill that's actually interesting to you that you could learn just for like a month or a couple of months to take a break from what you're currently doing during your PhD. I like to use this as a way to motivate me to learn new things, uh, build up momentum again, and also just kind of like refresh the mind. I think that a lot of people do a PhD because they enjoy learning new things, but there's a point in a PhD where you've kind of learned everything you need to do and then it's about execution. So just refresh that kind of like learning excitement every now and again. Maybe you need to learn to code. Maybe you want to learn a new skill. Maybe you want to learn about statistics. No, not definitely not that one. But maybe you want to learn a new skill that will help your PhD and just help you push that reset button. Ideally for you at the moment in your PhD, it is skills that you can apply to your PhD or your research afterwards, but really just anything that's even remotely related to your PhD will do. So remember to take a learning holiday if you feel that motivation slipping. I think that motivation is directly linked to your attention and therefore the energy. You only have so much energy throughout the day to kind of focus your attention on a certain thing. The problem is I found that during my PhD, I would be distracted by all of these different things. Some of them would take more mental energy and focus than others. It could be something completely unrelated to my PhD. And so what I like to do is write a do not do list. I find that it's very motivating to put off things that I know will immediately distract me. Now, motivation can easily sort of like get absorbed into a different activity. Avoid that activity at all costs if you are doing your PhD and you need to finish in a timely manner because it is just that, a distraction. You can always come back to that. So write down these things in a list and just avoid them. Just avoid doing them unless they're directly related to finishing your PhD. Building up momentum on the useful tasks will help you much more than uh, you know focusing on, on long-term projects on another thing. And it's so easy to get distracted. I get distracted all the time. Now that's not to say you shouldn't have hobbies that you delve into, but we're talking about like long-term projects that can easily absorb a lot of your motivation that are really just a, just a distraction. So write a list and avoid these things at all costs. Find the people that motivate you. I had a couple of kind of key supervisors and people during my PhD that if I talked to them about my research, for some reason, I was super inspired to do the next thing, to try something new, to like do something in the lab right away. One of these people, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying, was Professor Paul Dastor. This is him here. He was something of a motivational like guru. For some reason, a five minute conversation with him would make you want to do better, would make you want to enter the lab in my case and just try that new thing. And uh, it really sort of helped. So if you're feeling a little bit low on motivation, just think about the people that you speak to that really help kind of like lift your spirits. I think it's about sort of finding the people that you can absorb some of their passion or some of their at least interest in the topic that you're uh, researching. And I find that just a quick refreshing chat with these people can easily help push me through whatever self-doubt is going on or whatever kind of like barrier I'm facing. So find those people and speak to them whenever you're feeling low and just as kind of like a maintenance thing, just whenever you're feeling a little bit low on motivation, go have a chat with them. There's some people out there that are just infectious in like not a COVID way, in like a motivation way. <laughs> We all have our own reasons for doing a PhD. And one thing I like to do to keep up my motivation is regularly reconnect with the intrinsic motivation for why you're doing a certain thing. When you start a PhD, you're quite often quite uh, motivated just by the idea of doing a PhD and just scratch a little bit below the surface and really find out 
why that was. Was it that you wanted to become a doctor? Was it that you liked a certain thing? Was it that you really wanted to know more about um, a certain very small part of the world? Is there kind of a personal connection to your research? Think about those intrinsic motivators. When you first start a PhD, those are obvious. As you start kind of like being soured by the academic environment and the university system, the extra external motivations, extrinsic motivators, is that the right word? External motivators start to really become the thing that pushes you along, i.e comparison. Oh, that person's got more papers. I need more papers. The system wants this from me. My supervisor wants this from me. So reconnecting with what your actual connection to your research is can really help boost that motivation. Take a moment and just write a little list or think about when you were applying for your PhD. Go read your, um, your application again. Those things can really help boost motivation when you're feeling low. I can sometimes lose motivation because I become overwhelmed overwhelmed by the broadest topic that I'm trying to answer. The kind of goals that are three years away can sometimes overwhelm me to the point where I'm like a deer in their headlights and I just stop. So motivation for me really comes from knowing that I can tackle a particular challenge that's right in front of me. So instead of worrying about where I'm heading and where I need to be in a year, two years, three years time, I focus on what I can do right now. And that to me is very motivating. I don't need to worry about like, all of the things that may happen in the next three years. All I need to worry about is what's gonna happen in the next two hours, three hours, or that afternoon. What do I need to do? Don't focus on the things that stress you out. I get completely demotivated because it feels hopeless inside. And so by focusing on what I actually need to do next, it really kind of helps once again, keep up that momentum, and it allows me to reframe what I'm doing as lots of little tiny steps rather than one big leap. I think that the top PhD students know that there's a difference between needing to take a break because you need to keep up that kind of marathon sustained effort and having a break now will mean you'll be able to work much harder later. And also the difference between kind of like just being too easy on yourself. And so that's a really hard balance to kind of uh, keep because you know, we all have that internal monologue that's trying to preserve our energy and make sure that we uh, are comfortable. But sometimes you just have to push through that. And uh, it's different for, for everyone. And I know that I can be a little bit too easy on myself sometimes. And I'm like, oh, I'll just do that tomorrow. So, you know, having a schedule can really help. Um, just making sure that you know that you, uh, have, you have times off in the future where you can relax. Um, but there are some times, even if you have got a schedule, where you know you've just got to stop. You've just got to wait for a moment. And it may be a week, it may be just a day, it may just be an afternoon, whatever it is, you do have to stop because if you don't, you run the risk of burning out. And go check out my other video where I talk about burnout. I'll put the links everywhere. Um, and the issue is, is that we can be a little bit too easy on ourselves sometimes. And so we have to find that balance when we need to be kind to ourselves because we know in the long term it's gonna be beneficial, but also when to push ourselves just for an hour or so because we know that really we're being a little bit too easy on ourselves and you know we need to stick to the schedule. And that's a really tough thing to kind of know about yourself, but throughout a PhD, you'll slowly get to understand which one it is and whether or not you need to take a break or whether or not you need to be a little bit harsh on yourself and really push through those mental blocks. And uh, yeah, it's not easy to kind of understand where those lie, but have a go. And if in doubt, just push a little bit. If you push a little bit and then you're into the flow of things, you're probably in that like, I'm being too easy on myself stage. But if you push and you get worse, it's time to take a break. So let me know in the comments how you go with balancing those because it is incredibly tricky. So there we have it. I think that's what the top PhD students I've seen 
do to keep their motivation up? Let me know in the comments what you would add. And also remember to go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've got my Insider Forum as well. And if you want free stuff, go sign up to my newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule, and more. It's exclusive content that's available for free. So go sign up now. Nothing to lose. And I'll see you in the next video.